Thank you. All right. Okay. Are we ready to go? Yeah. All right, so hi everyone. Uh, my name is Miguel. These are my co-founders Jack and Steven and like Dave said, we are Flurry. We will keep you safe on dangerous roads. We'd like to start off this pitch by telling you a little story about a real driver that we talked to. One morning, a couple years ago, Kelly was driving to work on residential roads when she turned the corner onto a hill and began sliding on black ice, something that you have all probably experienced. At the bottom of this hill was a woman crossing the street walking her dog. Kelly just narrowly missed hitting this woman and avoided what could have been a catastrophic accident. She was lucky. A lot of drivers are not. The truth is, Kelly is far from alone. 50% of all drivers in the U.S. are extremely uncomfortable driving in slick conditions, which includes icy, wet, and snowy roads. And for good reason. These contribute to 1.3 million accidents annually, the economic costs of which are upwards of $31 billion. We are Flurry, and we're building a hardware software solution that prevents accidents on slippery roads. We offer 10 times more reaction time to road hazards than current solutions, and we're 66 times more locationally accurate regarding road data than competitors using similar methods. Our technology depends on a simple onboard diagnostics, or OBD plug, which is installed on all cars manufactured after 1996. We use existing car sensors to collect existing data, which we use to calculate uh, the slickness of the road. We'll crowdsource this data from all of our users anonymously in order to create live heat maps wherever they're driving. We'll take these maps to warn drivers of poor road conditions via existing tech like CarPlay, which can either offer a speed recommendation to slow down, maintaining a minimum stopping distance, or just give an alternative route entirely. Our competition breaks down into two main lanes. The first is preventative solutions, which warn you about hazards ahead of time, and the second is aftermarket solutions, which help you deal with the problem while you're encountering it. In the first category, Weather Telematics Inc. is a company that provides telematics data to trucking fleets. However, their, expensive, their data is incredibly expensive to collect. Um, it requires the installation of third-party sensors and is overall impra impractical to use. In terms of aftermarket solutions, studded tires are a popular choice. However, they are expensive to buy and maintain, they are illegal in many areas, and they are prone to sliding in snow, sometimes making them even more dangerous than not using them at all. We should also mention ways, as they are similar to us. However, they are primarily B2C and they deal mostly with traffic, so we do not consider them a main competitor at this time. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about our go-to-market strategy and specifically the four primary target markets that we've identified. The first of these is the b 2 b to c market, which includes trucking fleets and insurance companies. Now we've identified trucking fleets as a potential initial adopter for us because we, because we pro provide immense value to them as trucks are very prone to sliding and jackknifing on ice and in slippery conditions. And trucking fleets also provide immense value back to Flurry because they do a lot of the data aggregation that will be needed to start that initial crowdsourcing component. After that, we will then open up to the insurance companies, which we've had talks with and are very positive about this product. And they also have very low barriers to adoption because a lot of their consumers already have um, hardware components inside of their car to help with their insurance savings. After that, we will open up to the general B2B market where we will help uh, Waze, Google Maps, Apple Maps, and others augment their product further through Flurry before opening up to the general B2C market, as well as in the long term thinking about partnering with autonomous vehicle companies as they look to get their cars on the road sooner and want to have safety solutions such as ours. Starting to talk a little bit about the financials, in the first year we plan to do a beta with local transportation groups such as Pitt, Ohio, or Port Authority, and then following that we will do a release to Midwestern and Mid-Atlantic trucking fleets that will help us with this data aggregation, and over the course of the year we plan to get millions of data points as the trucks drive extensive mileage and we'll be able to help our crowdsourcing component get off the ground, which we will then go to the insurance groups, which will allow us to become cash flow positive as we quickly grow our subscription revenue. Now to talk a little bit about our MVP progress, we've configured an OBD2 plug to retrieve the inputs that are necessary for the kinematics and dynamics equations that will detect the road slickness. And in conjunction with that, we've also begun talking with uh, Stan Caldwell, who's the executive director at Mobility 21 and Traffic 21, who's offered to help us with our beta and to get Flurry into cars. And this is our team. It follows the tried and true startup structure of hacker, hustler, designer. My name is Miguel. I'm majoring in mechanical engineering, and I will be a product design engineer at Amazon this summer. Steven is our hacker with tons of robotics experience, including building robots for NASA. And Jack is our hustler with business experience that spans multiple startups, including most recently the Glimpse Group, which actually just, actually just went public. We think we are a well-rounded team to tackle this problem. And that is the end of our pitch. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, we would be happy to answer them now. I have a question, is it okay?
Yes. Yeah. Um, I saw several business models there, and I was curious, are you thinking all of them are subscription, or um, are there alternative methods of uh, revenue generation? Um, yes. So uh, to answer your question, we are planning on mainly a subscription-based revenue service as part of our um, the uh, value behind our product is this whole data aggregation and the data mapping, which a lot of competitors don't currently do and will enable us to warn drivers ahead of time. And so with that, we really need to focus less on like the profit margins behind the devices themselves, but actually getting it out into competitors and so we can have that monthly recurring revenue that is positive for investors, of course. So, yes. Thank you. Nice job. Thank you. Yes. As a, as a follow-on to that, is the... Is your um, customer base only those who have the hardware device, or are you collecting data from everybody who has the hardware device and selling the data to everybody? Yes. So there, so yes, there are two components in that. And so the first is that we are going to, especially within the B2C market and the insurance companies a little bit and the trucking fleets, but the more that we can get flurry devices inside the cars, the more reliable our network will be. And so for that reason, we are going to push it. However, we do understand that for plays such as uh, in the B2B to B market with like Waze, Google Maps, and Apple Maps, we will actually just be licensing like our data library so that they can like overlay it on top of their own systems. So in that sense, we won't actually have physical products for those market, for that market. Can I ask a question about the, uh, the amount of data you need for this? I'm, I'm unclear about one thing. Is this predictive as to a given road or highway, or is this real-time and changing conditions information? And the reason I'm asking that is I can't tell whether it's aimed at highly traveled roads, major, major thoroughfares, or smaller thoroughfares with much less traffic in a given situation. Yeah, so I can answer that. So obviously, like, as our product continues to grow, we'll be able to, like, cover more and more roads. Um, we have actually estimated that, like, a thousand trucks driving at any given time um, will be enough to cover the entire U.S. interstate system based on, like, how frequently they drive. And that's saying, like, if a, car, if a truck drives, like, over a single stretch of road, like, every hour, then we think that that's enough data to, like, accurately map, like, the changing weather conditions. Um, so about a thousand, and then it'll only get better sort of as it increases. Great, thank you. Nice job. So, I wanted to ask about the status of the hardware. Um, I think you gave us the test, but what are the remaining milestones needed for you to be able to test it in sort of on road conditions? Um, yeah, so to, um, the, the, the first milestone that we're thinking of, at least, is um, just collecting the data itself from uh, uh, local transportation firms like Port Authority and Pitt, Ohio, because um, they're likely already collecting this data to some capacity, since that's, uh, that's just the space that they're in. So uh, first, we want to uh, like confirm that our calculations uh, on this data actually works, and then we'll try like um, uh, putting our hardware into these cars later on, uh, depending on how that like initial like testing goes, um, and seeing if like collecting live data that's like current and not like historic data would would actually work as well. D does that answer your question? Yeah, and then, do you have an estimate for kind of when you think you would be able to, you know, I don't know test out uh, you know, the data collection and the calculations and be able to sort of you know have a sense for the road conditions? Mm -hmm. I think our beta time frame started like Q3 of this year. Um, yeah, so that, so that's when we'd start. Okay. So your hardware is somehow collecting data and then becomes predictive? Is that what's happening? Well, eventually we want it to become predictive. We think that that's the real utility. Um, right now, we're, you know, we're three people. We're, we're in college. We don't have, like, the AI skills to predict weather conditions. Uh, but eventually, you know, like, as we sort of expand our data set um, and hire more engineers, then hopefully we would be able to build some sort of algorithm that sort of looks at past data over time and then kind of is able to predict well into the future. So I don't quite understand the initial need for the hardware. Well, so the hardware is basically, that's what accesses the car's sensors. So we need the car's like wheel speed, we need the car's lateral speed, acceleration, um, all of that. Those are all inputs that we need to actually calculate the slickness of the road. And so that plug, when you plug it into the car, it feeds all of the data from the sensors from the car to us, and then we can process it, put it into our algorithms, mm -hmm. and, and then get like the, the outputs of the uh, slickness. That's of the really helpful. And have you picked up on who's paying the most money right now on slides off the road? Have you figured that party out? 
Who's losing the most money with their vehicles sliding off the road? Trucks. Other Yes, so yeah. we, we, have, we have figured that out, and it actually has been trucking uh, fleets because not only is it really expensive for them to uh, pay for the maintenance of, of, the maintenance of, their, of their trucks and stuff, but they also have to pay for the goods within it, and yeah. they have to pay like any liability and for the drivers. So we've identified them, which is a shock because originally we thought it might be insurance groups. But mm -hmm. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Flurry. Appreciate it. Yeah. Uh,